Hi, this is Chris Schomburg. I'm going to be your instructor for SOLIDWORKS. And for today, we're going to actually do two parts. We're going to do a part A and a part B. We're going to be talking about part number four, part A and part B. We'll start with part A. The whole goal of this uh, section of uh, chapter five is geometric relationships in fun and fundamentals. The book that we're using is Parameter Modeling with SOLIDWORKS 2022. Okay, the key objectives is to use geometric relationships, use dimensional variables, display and add and delete geometric relationships, understand and apply different geometric relationships. That's part A. Part B, we will actually do modify parametric equations and carefully defined, fully defined sketches. So you might be asking, okay, where would we use geometric relationships on our parts? Now, typically we do that to be able to define a part using the geometry that is there. So an example is a triangle. A triangle we know has 180 degrees. If we have an angle on a couple sides or a side, we should be able to define it, right? If we have an adjacent, an opposite, or a hypotenuse and an angle, we should be able to define the triangle, right? If it's a right triangle, that is. Now, if it's not a right triangle, we'll have to work a little bit hard to figure that out. But the whole point is, by using geometry, we can define things. Instead of just using a smart dimension, now we can actually use geometry to define things. Now, why is that important? Because geometry is used all the time. Symmetry and geometry can define how a part is made and how a part is made quicker and more efficiently. Okay. In part B, we will actually be using equations to modify those kinds of things. So we'll be using equations to define the size of the holes, the placement of the holes, or things like that. Why would you use that in industry? Well, typically, if you're sizing things up and sizing things down, you could make one sketch that defines how to build that part, and you could size it up or size it down based on the width or the length or both. That's the idea. Okay, so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start with our part. Now, the book does actually have you go through steps one through seven on page 4.5. This is to define that we have ANSI standard and IPS. So the first thing to do is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna hit, as always I do, I start with the I and then I turn on the planes, okay? Then I go ahead and I open the options, okay? And then I go into documents, I go to units and I go inches, pounds, seconds. We want three decimal places, okay? That's one, two, three. That's three significant figures, okay? The tolerance as uh, three significant figures or three decimal places. There we go. We're gonna hit okay. Okay, then we're gonna go in again. There's a reason why I do this and the reason is because it's important to designate that this is ANSI, not ASNI modified. We're gonna hit okay. There we go. So now we have our part, and now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna, we've opened the part, we have the planes. We're gonna go ahead, we're going to, instead of just clicking on the front plane like we did in the past, which is the orange, we're gonna click on the feature menu. We know how to use the feature menu. We're gonna hit sketch and sketch. If you don't have that sketch menu, what you can do is you can go into, into view, toolbars, Enable Command Manager. And if you don't have it, it'll look like that. We won't have that tab. We go View, uh, Tool View, Toolbars, and Enable Command Manager. And that's a really important thing to have. Again, I'm going to do that two more times. We're going to go View, Toolbars, Enable Command Manager, or View, Toolbars, Enable Command Manager. That allows us to have our sketches. There we go. So we're caught up at this point. We're gonna actually draw a rectangle. Now, I always draw at the origin. Don't do it for this one, don't be tempted. Draw it on the orange line, the first point. Go out into space on the second one. Go back to the orange line and then finish your drawing. You should have a rectangle. It looks like kind of a hatched out line there. That indicates that we have a closed loop and we have a closed surface. That's huge, okay? The next step that we have is if we go in here and we go to the eye, we can click down on the eye, we can actually in 
click on the view sketch relations or turn them on or off. Now, if we go ahead and just click on the eye, it deletes all of our planes, so we don't see that, and it's a little cleaner. But you can see right here, we can see we don't have the sketch uh, sketch relations, so we're going to click on them, and we can now see we have the horizontal, we have basically a point snap, and those kinds of things really help us. Applying the geometric relationships and dimension of constraints allows us to actually uh, use many different rules that are geometric rules. For example, perpendicular rules, parallel rules, tangent rules, uh, midpoint rules, concentric rules, collinear, horizontal, vertical, equal, fixed. You get the idea. It's very good to use. It's on page 5-7. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a relationship. Okay. So we're going to go add a relationship right here in the display and delete relationships. We're going to hit add a relationship. And we're going to actually put click here on point three. This was point one. This is point two. This is vertex point three. We're going to click on fixed. Now, what does that actually do? What, what it does is if we move this one around, we can move it around. It's still stuck on the base, the, the line, the, the horizontal line, but it can move around. This one right here, point number two, can move anywhere, okay? There's no fixed. It's not fixed at all. And then this last point is fixed exactly where it's at. It's, it's fixed in its place. It can't move, okay? All right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to actually click on the horizontal line and we're going to click on the parameters. We can actually define those parameters as 3.75, just like we did with our uh, smart dimension. So we're able to do that just like we did our smart dimension. And then they ask us to then smart dimension it to confirm that it is that length. So we're going to hit smart dimension, smart dimension, click on the orange and bring it down and hit enter. And guess what? That's the proper length. The cool thing though is we can actually, we can drag, we can try to drag this point now and now it can't drag. Before it could, now it can't because it's fixed. It has a fixed length, right? It has a fixed length, okay? This one's also fixed. So if I go out of the smart dimension, this one's fixed. This one's fixed, so point one and point three are fixed, but point two can move around, okay? Good, okay. So the next step is really to basically go into adding a linear relationship. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to go to display and delete relationships. We're going to go into add relationship. We're going to click on this guy right here. This is the line. We're going to click on vertical. Look at that. It automatically made it vertical. It's a 90 degree angle. Now we know how to define this really quickly. Now we have, now we just need an angle and we can define this right triangle, right? It's a right triangle now. And here's now this, this point before we can move it everywhere. Now it can only move up and down. It's only able to move up and down. Okay. So that's good. Okay. The next step is to actually define an angle and we haven't done this before. So we're going to click on smart dimension. We're going to click on the hypotenuse and the adjacent side, and then we're going to define it inside. Now this is actually, we're going to put it as 35. Hit enter. Now I'm going to click off so that it is defined. It's inside the part. Now I don't like defining things inside the part. So my students asked me how to do this because I said, you know, we want a unilateral dimensioning and we want it outside the part. So to do that, we can click uh, this once, okay, with a left click. Then we come down here in the dimension text and we can actually click on offset, offset text. And now to offset the text, and we can move that text outside of the part, and we can move the dimension outside the part. And so now we have a dimension that is an angle outside the part, and that is also unilaterally dimensioned so that it's not dimensioned in, it's all dimensioned in one, one direction, which is right now is a vertical, uh, basically, uh, dimensioning. So I don't have to turn my head like this to read it, right? I can just read all of these in one direction. Okay, so the next thing to do is actually to smart dimension. And we, we don't have to click the smart dimension over and over again. It's clicked right now. You can see that it's a little gray. So I can actually smart dimension this, this distance, which is actually the 
hypotenuse, right? This is the angle, so that's the high, or sorry, this is the opposite side. This is the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the longest side. This is the adjacent side. So 3.57 is the adjacent side, 35 is the angle. The opposite side is right here, and it is actually automatically dimensioned. It says, here it gives us an error. It says, make this dimension driven. Why? Why do we want to make this dimension driven? Because it's saying that by adding this dimension, you'll make this sketch overdefined or unable to solve. Do, do you want to make this dimension driven? So in other words, it's calculating what this is based on other things. It can't, we can't define it. It's already defined. We already know what the definition of this guy is, okay? So the next step is to actually click outside. And again, this is fine. This is a vertical dimension. We're good with that. It's now black, which indicates that it's actually a real dimension. It's defined at this point. It doesn't need to be redefined or, or evaluated. So the next step is to go ahead, we click right here on the 3.75, okay? We right click it, okay? We right click on that. Just a second. I am in Smart Dimension. So unclick the Smart Dimension, right click it here, hit delete, then go to Define Relationship and say Fully Defined Sketch, okay? Now, what we want is our baseline, our horizontal line is to be selected as right here. Okay, our vertical line we want to be selected is right here. Okay, and then we say in here, all entities selected, calculate. And it's actually going to calculate for us <laughs> these entities. And so the silly thing is it calculated it to the, to the, um, to the origin, which is not necessarily what we want. So I'm going to actually go ahead. I'm going to undefine that. I'm going to do it again, but this is silly because it's defining it at the origin point, which is really not what we wanted. Okay. Uh, it's, you know, it's an idea, but let's try it again. So let's go ahead. We're going to go to fully, fun fully evaluated. Or, okay. We're gonna go right here. We're gonna go ahead, select entities. Okay. I think if we go from here, maybe. All right, so let's undo that. Let's go back. Let's hit display, delete relationships. Let's say fully defined sketch. Okay. There's gotta be a way to select this as this point, this point. Is there a way to do that? Vertex. Vertex it does say line three. Okay, let's go up. Let's say select. There we go. <laughs> it was calculating the distance from the point to the origin. So now what I just did, and the book tells you to just do that, but that it depends on how where you put it on your plane. And see my origin point for my drawings. Like if we look, if we look real quick here. My origin point for my drawings is right here. So it's calculating the distance between the origin point. That's not what we wanted. We wanted to see how we defined, we wanted to calculate the missing value. So the idea was, the idea here is that you're deleting, okay, so you're clicking on this dimension here, you're deleting that dimension. It's undefined right now. We don't know what it is. But you're saying, well, we have enough constraints, we can calculate everything else because we have enough. There's enough geometric dimensions here to, to calculate. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're make it, gonna make a circle. So we're gonna just put a circle right in here, okay? In this case, we're gonna just, we're not gonna mention it, we're just gonna hit okay. Now we're gonna add display relations, we're gonna add a relationship. We're gonna go to the circumference of the circle and then we're gonna to go to the line here. Now to do that, we then have an added relationship underneath the property manager. We're gonna click on tangent. It moves our circle all the way up to the tangent line, which is really good. Okay, the next thing we can hit okay. And then the next thing is we're gonna do another relationship. We're gonna add another relationship, okay? And again, to do that, we hit the display and delete relationships. We hit add a relationship. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, 
we're going to go from the center point of the circle, which is the vertex of the circle, the center point. Okay, and then we're going to go to the line. And then we're going to say, in this case, we want to go ahead and we want to hit concentric. Okay, so what did that do? Okay, it was cool that we did that, but like, what did that do? So what that meant is that now we hit okay. This, this circle can only stay on the tangent line and it can only be defined in the concentric line, okay? So if I go back one step, let's just go back, let's delete the concentric. Now uh, we can define this, this circle all the way only on the tangent line. It can get bigger, it can get smaller, but it has to be on that tangent line. Now the tangent line, like if you're familiar with physics, one example of tangent line is if you have a weight and you have a string and you throw it in a, in a line or a you know jug of water or whatever, and then you let go, it, when you let go is the tangent line. It goes straight at that point out to infinity. And so that's basically the tangent line that I can think of. It's the same thing if you're driving in a circle and you keep driving in a circle in a circle and then all of a sudden you just you start, so you stop turning and you just go straight. That's what the tangent line is. It's just that breakaway point. The concentric, okay, is kind of interesting. So what, what that basically concentric is basically we go ahead and we click on the add relationships under the display and delete relationships. We add a relationship. We go to the vertex or the center point of the circle, and then we go to the line. So we're going to go add display and add relationships. We're going to go add relationship, click on the vertex, and click on the line, then we're gonna hit concentric. Okay. So now when we hit okay, what we can do is we can move only up and down on that vertical line, and we can only move across using the tangent line. Okay. So that's basically what we're left with. Okay. okay. Now we can delete each of these by just clicking on their properties and delete them. Now our circle can go anywhere we want it. That's not what we want. We want to actually define the circle. So we're going to define from the vertex to the base point, and we want to define that as one. Okay, then we're going to go ahead. We have the smart dimension already, so we can go from the vertex to the line, the, the fixed point. And we want to change that to point seven five. There we go. And then we want to go ahead we want to chain, change and define what our diameter is. Again, select on the orange so that it does that for you automatically. There we go. Now, all of our dimensions are in a unilateral uh, way, and we can see all the dimensions there. So we're going to exit the sketch, and then it asks us to go ahead and add the features extrude boss and it wants us to extrude to 0.25 and hit OK and then we're done and that is actually our first part that's part A for our part number four for this session.